With us now is Deidre O'Connell, and we're going to be talking real estate. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm well, Don. I'm very happy to be here again. Thank you. I know. I've missed you. I genuinely have missed you. I know. I know. We miss, each, we miss a lot of people right now that we haven't been in co their company. So in real estate, going through the pandemic, tell us a little bit about what's been happening at Daniel Gale Sotheby's International. Well, it's been quite a journey. On March 13th, uh, it was a Friday, Friday the 13th. I'll always remember the date. Um, we made the decision to close all of our 26 offices prior to the governor making that, um, that mandate for the whole uh, state. Okay. And we did it for the safety of our agents and the safety of our buyers and sellers. But it really meant transitioning our business, which was very office-centric, people-centric, to a very virtual business. And that's not easy to do overnight, but I'm really proud of our corporate team, of our management team, and of our agents of the, because they were very resilient and they were able to make the pivot. And um, it's, been, it's been quite a learning experience, but I think it showed our leadership in, in uh, the business and here on Long Island. What are some steps? What's it like now to you know, list your home or you know, buy a house? What's mm -hmm. the process like? Well, I think I kind of have to maybe bring you through the process of, of, of March okay. to July, right? Okay. So starting in March, we couldn't physically show homes. We couldn't physically go to any of our offices. So we, ha we very quickly transitioned to virtual. And we were the first company to have a major virtual open house tour. We had over 100 properties virtually um, uh, brought to market, really, to the, to the consumer. And it was done through Zoom and Facebook Live. And we had, in some instances, up to 50 participants, people coming to the open houses, and sold significant properties wow. in April, which was a terrible time for us. I mean, certainly right. our, our sales were down significantly over the year prior. But the fact that we sold any homes, I think, really demonstrates the opportunity um, if you're working with the right company to, to, to continue no matter what the world gives you, no, no matter how, how uh, many challenges you face. And there were even little things such as um, we always had beautiful glossy brochures in all of our homes. And we always had the ability to do digital brochures, but nobody did and nobody used them. And now the agents are, are really doing virtual, I mean, digital brochures, which they can email easily to the, to the potential buyer. So that was all new, all new. And parts of that I think are here to stay. So as a team, you kind of just stepped up. Yes, yes. You, you just rose above. And I think we were also very fortunate here on Long Island okay. because our market had, had a new audience. Hmm. For many, many years, we saw buyers going to the city, young people staying in the city, families, um, people raising families in the city. And as soon as COVID hit, we saw people re having renewed interest in the suburbs and the eastern end of Long Island, which has been very exciting, extremely exciting. And today, if I wanted to call you and I'd say, okay, I want to list my house, what steps are mm -hmm. happening now? Yeah, so it, list your house is an important part because the one thing we are suffering a little bit with is okay. lack of inventory. Okay. Because so many of the properties sold, particularly everywhere, everywhere actually, but for instance, on the eastern end of Long Island, the secondary home market, they're seeing a switch. Hmm. Actually, people are deciding to make that their primary home and maybe downsizing in Manhattan and having that as their secondary home and, and enrolling their children in school on the Eastern End. So that's really um, made a lot of the inventory sell quickly in a small period of time. So now we need more inventory. We're seeing it in our suburban markets as well, where people are coming out from the city but still want to be close enough or people that want to move for lifestyle reasons, like where people are now in a house with their children, two parents working, and they're maybe on a half acre of property without a lot of lifestyle amenities. Mm. Now they want to go a little bit bigger for properties that have actually struggled for the past 10 years, that they may have two acres of property and a pool and a pool house, um, and of course, office space for the parents. So people, are re I really wow. say they're reanalyzing their lives. Okay. And the home is part of it, where it used to really just be a place to, to sleep maybe, um, and then, uh, as we know, the recent trends have been that people wanted more lifestyle outside the home. Now they're looking for lifestyle within the home. I love that. Yeah. So that people can really, like, maybe it's your staycation that you're going to have. Correct. So they're looking for a little more property, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Are these changes, do you feel, um, after the pandemic, are they here to stay? 
Do you feel like this is going to be the new norm I for us? I think aspects of it are absolutely here to stay. Okay. I think pe this people will always live with the, um, in the back of their mind that this could happen again. So they want to be prepared. But I also think there are conveniences that came about because of it that are going to stay just because it's easier. For instance, I don't think someone's going to get in their car and drive two hours to coldly look at a house as readily as they did in the past. I think they will say to the real estate agent, you know, can you give me a virtual tour first? Yes. And then we'll decide what we're going to look at. And I think from a, a, a corporate perspective, we're not going to make our managers maybe come in once a month physically to have a manager's meeting. Maybe we'll do that less often because it's more productive to do a Zoom meeting more frequently and for a shorter period of time. So there are aspects of this that will certainly stay forever because they've enhanced our world. Well, I celebrate your leadership. I mean, you've done such a great job there. You know, and I know that you're passionate about it. I know that you love it. I know that you have got an amazing team. And do you find that now with some people being downsized, um, that they might be pivoting and they might actually be great at being a real estate agent? Yes, absolutely. There's such great opportunity in this business because it's flexible, yet it's, um, it, it, it's fulfilling. And I do believe that especially if you come from a good corporate background and you're used to working hard, okay. you can be very successful in real estate. I believe that might be the key. Yeah. Um, I love homes, you know that I do. I love going out and uh, being inside of some of the houses and doing that type of uh, virtual tour, as you said, uh, for people and love working with you. And I'm so glad to be back working with you again and wish you all the best for continued success and uh, let the house games begin, right? Uh, yes, yes, I agree, <laughs> house, I agree. We're house. very excited, so thank you, Donna. <laughs> thank you, be well. There you go, stay tuned. They are the leaders in real estate. If you have any questions, please go to their website. And coming up next, you know we always have a great tour.